This is Info Live TV headline news. I'm Daniel Ben Nun. The United States can expect a terrorist attack using nuclear or more likely biological weapons before 2013. A bipartisan commission reported in a briefing with Vice President-elect Joe Biden on Tuesday. The briefing, which is scheduled to be publicly released on Wednesday, suggested that the Obama administration should bolster efforts to counter and prepare for such attacks by appointing an official on the National Security Council. To exclusively coordinate U.S. intelligence and foreign policy on combating the spread of nuclear and biological weapons, while the report acknowledged that terrorists still lack the needed scientific and technical ability to make weapons out of pathogens or nuclear bombs, it warned that the gap could be easily overcome if terrorists find scientists willing to share or sell their know-how. The commission also said that biological weapons are more likely to be obtained and used before nuclear or radioactive weapons because nuclear facilities are more carefully guarded. While laboratories with potentially dangerous pathogens are numerous and could be easily compromised, Palestinians clashed with dozens of Israeli settlers in Hebron on Tuesday, seriously wounding an Israeli youth by striking him in the head with a rock. The clashes come after right-wing activists stepped up preparations to resist an order by Israel's High Court of Justice to evacuate a disputed property in Hebron. On Monday night, some 1,500 right-wing activists poured into the city to reinforce the residents of the disputed property after rumors spread that police were preparing to evacuate it. The Labor Party postponed its primary elections on Tuesday following a series of technical malfunctions that shut down its new touchscreen voting machines. Stations across the country complained of technical glitches in the new system that replaced paper ballots. The mishap was just the latest setback for the embattled party, which was once the dominant party in Israeli politics. Recent polls show Labor is slipping drastically and may only win as few as six seats out of 120 in Israel's upcoming elections. The Israeli Air Force killed two Palestinian terrorists who fired mortar shells at the Karem Shalom crossing on Tuesday afternoon. Four other men were also injured in the strike, which took place east of the southern town of Rafah in the Gaza Strip. According to reports, following ongoing mortar attacks throughout the day, Israeli jets identified the mortar launching cell and opened fire, scoring a direct hit. Sources in Gaza reported that the Palestinians killed were two brothers from the village of Shuka near Rafah. Thousands of Israelis gathered at funeral homes across the country on Tuesday to pay their respects to the six Jews killed by Islamic terrorists during the Chabad House massacre in Mumbai last week. The funeral of Rabbi Gabriel Holzberg and his wife Rivka, who had both served as Chabad emissaries in Mumbai, was held at Kfar Chabad. After beginning at 1 p.m., the funeral procession continued on to Jerusalem, where President Shimon Peres, Defense Minister Ehud Barak, Opposition Leader Benjamin Netanyahu, Deputy Prime Minister Eli Ishai, and former Chief Rabbi Israel Meir Lau gathered to commemorate the victims. Meanwhile, thousands of mourners gathered in the ultra-Orthodox neighborhood of Meir Sherim in Jerusalem. For the funeral of Mumbai victim Arya Lebish Tedelbaum, at noon a service in memory of Ben Sion Krumen, another victim, was held in Bat Yam. He is to be buried later in the afternoon at the Segula Cemetery. Tel Aviv resident Yochevet Or Paz's funeral will be held in Tel Aviv's Yarkon Cemetery. The funeral of Norma Schwarzenblatt Ravinovitz, the Mexican Jewish citizen who was murdered during the attacks, will also be held in Jerusalem. Yet, unfortunately, no government ministers were present during the procession. Thank you for watching Info Live TV, Israel's only internet television channel that broadcasts in four languages from Jerusalem to the world.